Okay, with your patience and diligence, you have gotten through the first two exercises. And now we go into assignments proper. And that starts unit four, where we're not only getting introduced to compositing, we're really trying to make something with it. The first thing we're going to make is called a fantasy landscape. And it relates professionally to what's called concept art. Right? So whenever there's a new Star Wars movie, one of the early concept meetings is what kind of planets are we going to have? And in Star Wars, every planet is just one thing, which is a little annoying. So they have lots of desert planets, right? They have jungle planets, they have resort planets, they have ice planets, they have all these things. That's a setting. That's a fantasy landscape. And it's not enough to just say, oh, it's an icy place. You have to decide, well, is it kind of dangerous looking or is it inviting looking, right? It's the difference between the North Pole where there are snowmen that are animated in it, and the edge of tomorrow kind of icy chasms and battlefields. Right? So concept for landscape has a lot to do with just what you want. And you can start that before you look for any images to composite. When you're using other people's pixels in compositing, it's important to be able to control what the vision is because this is your work. So this is not what I call a sticker sheet. If your finished work looks like you just took this element from here and put it onto here, like you would with like a sticker sheet, then you're not originating anything. You're just using derivatives, right? And you're just moving layers around. So it's kind of like our exercise one where you really wanted to transform the line art into your own thing. But in exercise one, we were just experimenting and seeing what we could get. That was our own thing. Here you want to have a vision for what you can get. And that vision is going to be a landscape. And the best landscapes to use for settings, whether it's for animation, whether it's for uh, special effects for live action, whether it's for video game, is always one with three layers of depth. And so that means there's an identifiable foreground, an identifiable middle ground, and an identifiable background. And I show that a little bit in the assignment. Because we're using other people's pixels for this, and you are allowed to use your own photographs for this as well. So some students will decide, oh, I want a, a giant yucca plant, like, but turn it purple in the foreground. So they might just go out on campus and take a photograph of one and then have a high resolution one to use. And that's fine. But we're using pixels from other sources. We're not creating these pixels in Photoshop. right? So that's why we're compositing. But because we're using other people's pixels, we want to be a little bit aware of how easy it is to copy pixels perfectly, right? And that has advantages, but it also has disadvantages as artists. So there's this question of the day, and we'll be discussing this through the next few assignments. But it is due by tonight for you to at least start this question of the day and just put some of your thoughts down. And then you can always revisit it uh, any time through the semester to get full credit. You get full credit if you answer this question with at least 100 words. You know, so just a thoughtful response that might grow with our discussions. So what are the advantages and disadvantages of raster art, pixel-based art, over traditional art, right? And we can, this can be in two dimensions or in three dimensions. And I give you a little link to our intro to the digital art discipline slides so you can remind yourself what these different ways of using pixel-based imaging are, right? Both compositing, but also things like straight digital painting and 3D rendering, all which use pixels. And what are the advantages and disadvantages of doing that versus painting with acrylic or using markers or using colored pencils or using clay or carving wood? I'm curious about your thoughts there. And then we're going to do a whole class discussion and we'll make a chart of advantages and disadvantages kind of see what you guys think. I make these discussions so you can see each other's ideas and then use those to spur your own. So some past examples of this project. I like to be inspired by cartoon backgrounds. You know, animation backgrounds are, are beautiful and really well thought out. And then they just have cell shaded characters on top of them, whether it's Looney Tunes, whether it's Mickey Mouse stuff, Disney stuff, and feature films, of course, as well. And what we're trying to do is to get different planes of depth, like background, middle ground, foreground in all of these. And often you can see that really well controlled in animated backgrounds. This student went kind of above and beyond with their sketch. 
which is why I include it, because they actually included some of the, the image reference that inspired it, right? And they numbered it. So some students have their idea, like rocky ice world with lots of jagged hills, and then go and find large side, size reference, at least a thousand pixels. And then based on some of the references, they start sketching their com compositions. And I'll encourage you to sketch them both as a vertical composition and as a horizontal, but you're only going to make one. So as long as you have one useful sketch, you're ready to go for Wednesday. But by doing it in both ways, it shows that even from the same sources, you can really design them in different ways. This is really your own vision. And then this is what ultimately came out of it, kind of blending it and making it work. Same thing with these. You can use man-made, but when you use man-made elements, you can see some more examples here, you are a little bit more limited. Because when they're man-made, they have to match perspective. You know, we know what perpendicular lines are in a building and in a windowsill. So you can't just warp it and make it something else. But with organic things, you can't tell when a crystal is out of perspective or when a bush is or a rock or a cactus, right? So organic things are a little bit more forgiving. Now, because these are background plates, you can use as many elements as you like but you should not have any figurative elements. Those are things that we would expect to be moving, right? So think of it as being the set for a play. You're going to have actors on this stage. You don't want the background to have things that are frozen in space, like an airplane in the sky that never moves. So we, we stick to background elements for this. That doesn't mean you can't use things like dust and mist, but anything that we would expect to be moving quickly, like a working car, you know, best to leave out. Fire, fire is best left out, and then we can animate it in later. Make sense? Okay, so avoid f what's called figurative imagery, things we would expect to be moving. Sometimes your sketch will be fairly close to what you end up with, but sometimes substantive changes are really needed. So instead of the city they had planned to put here in the foreground, uh, a bridge worked a lot better. Right, in terms of scale and in terms of where your viewer is looking from. On and on. Uh, sometimes the sketches can be incredibly simple. This is not a drawing class. I really encourage drawing classes. They're fantastic. But you do not need to be able to draw really cleanly to envision where you want certain elements to go. So this is a completely functional sketch to give us this. And then some instructor examples. I sketch digitally just so I can show you the process. I will do that with this one. And I'll usually sketch a vertical and a horizontal, though I choose one or the other. Just on whatever I think is working best. And you can use things like bones. You can use things like wrecked vehicles, things that we wouldn't expect to be moving. Okay. So let's get started. You can always use the, the YouTube playlist to see past examples of me going through this, especially for sketching if what I do right now doesn't make the most sense, right? You can always look at, at past videos as well. So this is the project. You need to do at least five. You are not going to have trouble finding five things to include. In fact, your finished composite is going to be probably more like 10 to 20 layers of things. But there'll be a lot of internal compositing. There'll be a lot of what's called texture. Uh, overlays we do, like kind of adding mist in. And we're going to be altering these not just in their edges and their selections, but also in their color, in their lighting, just in all ways. So it's like collage with benefits. We need to make a planning sketch before we build it digitally. And so following these is basically your homework for Wednesday, collecting reference and making sketches. As you're collecting reference, they need to be at least, and bigger if possible, 1,000 pixels in the smallest dimension. So that's large according to Google Image, but Google Image, everything is copyrighted, right? So I like, and you can use copyrighted stuff. You are students. It's fair use. You're using this to learn. But I'm going to recommend this image source called Pixabay, which is all donated images. And I'll give you a link to it, but you can just go to pixabay.com. 
And I have to pick a concept before I can start looking for stuff, right? There's way too many images. So Pixabay has 2,852 pages with around 200 images per page of images tagged landscape. But what's nice about these is every single one of these is extremely large. <laughs> and no watermarks is like voted in by a community that checks it for quality. And they are free for you to use and you do not need to give any attribution. Free to use, no attribution required. The only thing they don't want you to do is to, if, if I save this now and put it in my store and then start selling it without any alteration, they frown on that. That's how Pixabay license is different than a Creative Commons opens license. But that makes sense. And that's just because Pixabay doesn't want a clone site that's competing with it for profit. <laughs> you know? So this is large enough that if you view it, this is just using preview, but if I view it at full size, so view actual size, it takes up several of my computer screens. And you'll see that the pixel resolution is really, really sharp. So Pixabay is a good resource. Though it might not have everything you need. In my other class, I'm doing a a Candyland theme. So I thought I would do the opposite or conceptual opposite for this. And we're going to do veggies. A veggie scape. It doesn't mean you guys don't get to use landscape stuff. You can use trees, rivers, mountains, clouds, planets. But I'm going to try to limit it to vegetables. So I have to think. If I'm going to do a veggie scape, let's see, broccoli would be good trees, right? And so I can look through kind of cursory, and I can even start getting references. And if I had more time, there are five pages of broccoli. Ooh, celery is a good idea. Well, it's always good to have more reference, right? So I'm going to open that in a new tab, and now I'll search for open that in a new tab. But let's do celery. Yeah, nice. Look at that. And I don't have to worry about the resolution of these. And they're already photographed on white. That makes it easy to select. So I could, I could find some that are, are pretty useful. And already, I'm, you're going to be saving a lot more than you might actually use. You know, these are options to kind of get your sketches started. OK, what other kind of vegetables? Looking at this, ah, oh, mushrooms. I don't know what these are. Truffles. Truffles, nice. Those are the fancy mushrooms. That's pretty cool. They're like boulders, right? So I might do that. I'll go ahead and download that one. Pick the biggest size. You do need to sign in to get the largest download options, but you just create an account with any email. It is free. They do not advertise to you. It's pretty basic. And then if you don't want, they do advertise to you here. The reason I don't get a bunch of Shutterstock images first before the Pixabay results is just because I've donated more than 10 images. I don't have to pay anything, but it, you can do that if you like as well. And I make 2 to $3 a year from people giving me a coffee. So I don't always tell the IRS that. But I'm rolling in it because I've donated to Pixabay. So back here, let's see. So if I want... I'm getting an idea. There's like truffles, there's mushrooms. These are good kind of focal points, right? And they might have some landscape elements already around them that would be useful to me. Oh, I like this for kind of a field of something. But this is starting to get too detailed specific. I'm just showing you that the references are there. So this is where the sketching comes in. And I'm going to go ahead and sketch in Pixabay. Not Pixabay, in PhotoP. In case you did want to digitally sketch so you know how you can. And I'm just going to create a new project and I'm going to make it our usual 8 inches by 10 inches by 300 pixels per inch with the white background. And now I haven't even downloaded these resources yet, but I, I kind of have a sense of what's out there. 
So 